tell me which way you think this trial is leaning right now. Do we have any sense of the way the judge is leaning? How how is this going to end up? I think that's, I think well, sure, either one of us could answer it, but I think we'd probably I don't think we really know. I think Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers, she uh, is an experienced antitrust judge. She's presided over many antitrust cases. Um, she didn't really tip her hand. I mean, Shannon and I both listened to a, you know the better part of the trial for three weeks, and we were sort of on, you know, just you wait for her to just say something or ask any question that would give you some hint of what she might be thinking. And those questions were really few and far between until really Friday when Apple CEO Tim Cook took the stand. Uh, he was called by Apple as a witness. And then um, after you know, Epic was done cross-examining him, uh, that's when we started, we started hearing the judge talk and ask questions. They were really tough questions that she asked of, of Tim Cook. And some of them weren't even questions. They were, they were statements where she, you know, expressed some doubt um, about how genuine his answers were. Um, and you started to get a sense that, you know, she did see some problems with um, Apple's business model. She saw some problems with lack of competition, stifling innovation, and um, not just innovation in terms of new apps, but innovation in terms of security even. So I think you, we can't predict what she's going to say. It's going to be Probably a very complicated and long uh, written verdict um, could be over a hundred pages, um, and and I think that there will be things in there that will make both sides happy and both sides upset. It's not going to be a cut and dried win. What do you what do you think, Shannon? Yeah, I I think, I think that you put it pretty well. Um, so uh, there are some things that. that uh, Judge Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers said on Monday that give us some kind of indication of what she's thinking about. She just talked about the anti steering provisions. Um, so the rules um, in the Apple App Store saying that, you know, developers can't point customers to another way to pay outside of the Apple App Store. And there's some thinking that maybe, you know, the judge could consider those rules and, and ask Apple to change them, even if she doesn't rule in favor of Epic. She could just ask Apple to revise the guidelines a little. And also um, she mentioned the California unfair competition law. So she might be also looking at, you know, whether or not Apple has demonstrated anti-competitive behavior and not just um, is Apple running a monopoly. Maybe it's not running a monopoly. Maybe it's just a little bit anti-competitive and that could work under California law. And she kind of made that reference to, you know, we're in, we don't, they don't call us the Wild West for nothing. Um, and I think that was, you know, to describe the kind of legal landscape of, of how things are in California versus the rest of the country. Um, so I think there are, you know, like Reed said, there, there are ways for um, the judge to come to a conclusion that would compromise between Apple and Epic. Um, but in terms of like the, what, experts that I've interviewed have said, they all think that there isn't much legal precedent for Epic to win. Um, and so it might not be the case that the judge would rule in favor of Epic because there's only been like one case that they, they could look to, which is the 1992 Kodak case, um, where Kodak was ruled to be running a monopoly on its own products. So. so to be sure I have this right, it, it seems like there are three, I wouldn't say equally likely, absolutely not equally likely, but there are three kind of big outcomes that we can foresee. And one of them is that the judge rules in favor of Apple, things stay more or less the same. The second is this kind of compromise position that both of you have mentioned that seems to be related to anti-steering provisions and, and kind of removing some of those uh, elements in Apple's guidelines that bar developers from making certain pro-consumer moves. And then the third, from how you've described it, least likely scenario is that the judge rules in favor of Epic. Is that roughly a correct breakdown? Is there an element that I'm missing? How do you guys feel about that? Well, one thing I would I would clarify there is that even if you get a ruling where, you know, she, a remedy like Shannon described, where, you know, you're going to 
uh, let's say, prevent Apple from um, preventing app developers uh, uh, from steering customers to an alternative payment method, uh, which uh, anti-steering is a jargony legal term. You know, this is basically you're playing a video game and you're, you know, you're offered a, an opportunity to make an in, in-app purchase um, and you, you click and purchase that within your iPhone, you're giving 30% of that purchase to Apple. And game developers, any developer, they're not allowed to say when that, when that in-app purchase window comes up, by the way, go to our website and get a 30% discount here. You're not allowed to do that. So let's say the judge says, okay, Apple, you can't, you can't prevent developers from steering people to those alternative payments anymore. That is a win for Epic. Because in order to do that, there there has to be a legal framework there. She can't just say, you know what, Apple, you know you're you're not doing anything wrong here, um, but I'm just going to do this anyway because I I think it's fair. It's fair um, that it has to be backed up by by law. And the and what that would mean is that she found Apple was the monopoly. 